Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Uh, today I'll show you how to use an uh, open source LLM model called Mistral for uh, invoice data extraction. I'll be using a text PDF document and uh, I'll show you a couple of examples how uh, you could uh, provide prompts to Mistral and uh, uh, what type of answers uh, Mistral provides and also here a uh, sample application <coughs> uh, basically a wrapper, Python wrapper for Mistral model which uh, would help you to uh, uh, process your own data and uh, I'll explain main concepts of this application. Uh, if you Google or check on YouTube there are uh, other resources explaining uh, Mistral or Llama 2, um, but my goal is uh, not to go uh, just uh, line by line for the code, but uh, to explain you main concepts that I understood um, for myself uh, and I think the concepts that are important <clears throat> and hopefully this would help you to uh, uh, speed up your own implementation. Okay, so here you can see uh, GitHub uh, repo for, for the sample application. I'll, po I'll post URL for this application below the video and if to uh, summarize, so the quick start would be the first thing you would need to create your local Python environment, right? Then you install uh, the requirements and then you run Python uh, ingest and <clears throat> what this does, uh, this thing, uh, it actually extracts uh, text data from your PDF and converts uh, the data into the embedding in a certain chunks and stores in a local uh, vector store on disk. And then the second step, if Python main, you provide the question and <clears throat> now <clears throat> the, this script runs, um, it extracts uh, uh, embeddings pre uh, st stored in a vector store in a previous step and then uh, it's using this embedding, so ch it runs uh, Mistral LLM in this case and uh, gets the answer for, for the question provided. Um, and I did tests with uh, Llama 2 and Mistral and I think for invoice specific data maybe Mistral performs a bit better but Llama 2 is also quite good. But uh, since <coughs> Mistral is a newer model then I, I thought that let's develop sample with, uh, sample application with Mistral. Okay, now <clears throat> let's check the uh, PDF file. So this is quite simple PDF file and uh, uh, my point is to use this as a reference. Of course, uh, real world PDF files are usually bit or invoices are more complicated and this would mean that probably you need some to change some parameters of the Mistral LLM uh, or Llama 2 to perform on your type of documents. But in general, uh, this document is good for testing. It also got some uh, minor, let's say, complexity. There is a client information on the right side, seller on the left, and there is a tax ID for both. So when we ask for the tax ID for client, then we need to get this one. Then there, are multiple, there is a table with invoice items, then this, uh, uh, this area, which also another table with uh, totals and uh, summary values. Okay, so now let's switch to uh, development environment and let, let's first see how the model performs. So what I did, uh, I'm running Mistral on local computer, on CPU, so I don't need GPU and I don't need cloud, but uh, yeah, of course you need have a uh, decently powerful uh, CPU machine um, with like uh, at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or 32 gigabytes of RAM. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, i9 uh, Intel processor, and it runs uh, quite decent. Um, it takes around, let's say, 30 to 40 seconds for, for the question to answer. Uh, if I would like to have uh, faster responses, then I would rather upgrade my machine to uh, M1, um, uh, Apple M1, or I would go with GPU. And I did the same tests uh, for the same code on uh, call-up GPU. It was um, producing response in a matter of, of a second or so. So, uh, so the improvement is uh, quite significant, but. In this case, it's not important because I'm doing local tests and I'm just comparing different models, doing research, so running it on CPU and executing a uh, question, getting some uh, and getting answer after 30 seconds, uh, it's uh, it's completely fine in this case. So let's see how the model performs. So the first question is retrieve invoice number value, and here I get the answer, which is correct. 
Then uh, the second question is retrieve invoice date value. And uh, now I get the answer for this specific invoice. Uh, this is the invoice date. And then if I double check, I can see this is exactly the value uh, which is, comes from the PDF. So extraction was correct. Another one is uh, asking to retrieve client name, address, and tax ID. And then I get here the information. This is the client name, this is the address, and this is the tax ID. So this means the model was able to extract this information from the text array of data that was passed to the, uh, to the LLM model. OK, then uh, another question is, retrieve gross or value for the second invoice item. And this is, uh, this is the amount. If you go here, we check this is correct. So this uh, so this means the model is able to understand more complex questions, like uh, it is able to understand that I'm asking about the second invoice um, item, for example, in this case. So that's uh, quite quite great. And then ask for it if invoice total amount. In this case, it's also was correct. Uh, we double check it here, and we ask for a more complex question. In this case. Uh, 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 to retrieve three values, total gross worth, invoice number, and invoice date. And they get uh, uh, three values returned, one, and second, and third. This means that uh, uh, LLM uh, can handle not uh, question, not only the questions for, with the single task, but, but with multiple tasks as well. Uh, this is great. Now you see all the answers are returned less things, and my next goal in my research is to see if it will be possible to return uh, JSON with key value pairs, which will be more appropriate uh, if I'll invoke uh, this model through API. All right, so we can see now we saw the, how the model performs is is quite good. Of course, uh, if you would ask more tricky questions, then um, for example to calculate uh, totals of all invoice items or whatever, then it may fail. Uh, but uh, uh, there is option to tune the execution based, uh, change, based on changing configuration properties. Uh, or uh, another thing is that open source models are evolving, and soon I think there will be even more powerful models than uh, Mistral. And, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to handle invoice data quite accurately very soon. And probably there'll be quite powerful open source models with visual processing so we can pass um, uh, image PDF uh, to the model and it would extract uh, the data automatically and uh, would allow to work uh, with the data like with the text data. The same what is uh, available already uh, on ChatGPT with the visual processing, for example. So now let's look into the sample application. Uh, first of all, this is a configuration file, and uh, uh, what I notice is that the chunk size and chunk overlap uh, uh, should be reduced. Uh, if you look at other examples on the internet explaining how to chat with large PDF documents, they typically have larger chunk size, uh, but with the one or two pages of invoice documents, then I notice that chunk size should be smaller, otherwise you get some garbage results. Then I specify the model type Mistral, and this is the uh, model path, uh, which is located on disk on, within the same application. Then I'm using uh, uh, this kind of embeddings model, and the embedding model helps to translate uh, a raw question into the uh, embeddings, and then I store those embeddings in the vector store, uh, so that I'll be able to communicate with the LLM. And then this is the max new tokens, and temperature should be either zero or just uh, close to zero, because uh, as close the, uh, the temperature is to zero, this means that there are less of the imagination in for LLM, and it, in, at least in the case of invoices, it should um, return the actual values that are in a document without inventing the responses. Okay, so that's configuration file and. Uh, under data folder, you can place your PDF document, you can place multiple documents and try to see how it works uh, fetching data from one or another document by providing some contextual information about the document. Uh, under ingest script, uh, we, what we do, we're using those um, hanging face embeddings and we are producing the uh, embeddings and storing them in, uh, under the vector store. 
<laughs> okay, then there's the main script which helps to execute uh, the code under LLM folder. Then uh, under models folder, this uh, model itself, and uh, because it's a huge size and it's a quantized model, so uh, this is the reason I'm able to run it on CPU. And uh, it's huge size, like seven gigabytes or so, uh, or four gigabytes maybe. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's possible to manage uh, this kind of files and download them from the internet. And I didn't upload it, so the model is not uploaded to the GitHub because it's huge, but there's a text file which uh, provides the URL, uh, and you can use this URL to download exactly the same model that I'm testing now in this application. Okay, and then there's readme file requirements, and the vector store folder is generated once you run uh, ingest command. And if you check here, this uh, under LM folder, there's a wrapper, which uh, sets the prompt and constructs the long chain uh, retrieval. Uh, 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 retrieval class and uh, yeah, so this is the main main uh, wrapper class which helps to interact with the LLM uh, prompts. It uh, uh, script just a helper script which um, uh, contains the uh, template of the prompt which is sent to LLM, and this is how communication happens through the long chain with LLM. And my next step will be to research if I could uh, change the template to tell LLM to, uh, instead of returning plain string, to return uh, structured JSON data with key value pairs. So we'll see how it works. And finally, there's an LLM script. Uh, and here I'm using an open source library called C Transformers. And this library, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's able to run quantized models like Llama 2, uh, Mistral, and uh, it's basically the main uh, engine that uh, uh, enables communication between LLM, uh, executes the uh, L, uh, action, get, and gets the answer for, for the question. Okay, so uh, to summarize, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, how uh, uh, Mistral LLM works on CPU locally. And I think this is the huge advantage because this uh, large uh, uh, market, lots of use cases with private data, and you don't want to run uh, LMs on cloud, you want to run them on premise and control environment, and uh, even on CPU to save costs, for example, uh, for the hardware and uh, open source is evolving very fast. And already today, we can, as you saw, we, you can extract data from invoices with uh, Mistral or Llama 2. And uh, let's see how it goes. I think the, there'll be, as time goes, there'll be even more powerful models released and uh, we'll be able to extract data very in a reliable way. So thanks for watching it. See you next time. Bye.